Glory. Oh, nothing like getting refreshed and not refleshed in the presence of the King of King and Lord of Lords. Oh, it's a good day to die, isn't it? <laughs> to yourself. <clears throat> Thank you, Master. <laughs> I have a wonderful, strange teaching this morning. A message from the Lord. <laughs> Remember that on VeggieTales? The camel dude? Jonah? <laughs> Comes in on the camel and he says, I have a message from the Lord. And they started slapping each other with fish. It's pretty funny. <laughs> they went to, what was it? Nineveh. And God showed mercy on them. <laughs> but Jonah didn't want to show mercy. He wanted them destroyed. See, the enemy wants to destroy us. He puts humanity against humanity to bring an end. But he can't do that. He's accomplished many things to do some of it. We've lost many souls to the enemy because of uh, the area where lack of prayer, lack of fellowship, not maintaining connection, not main maintaining a routine to overcome. Even believers, pastors, all kinds, people are falling left and right. Because the shaking is a quaking. You know, shake it right off the pulpit. This is not about a religious time. It's a biblical time. We are in a time of great distress, but a great victory. There is a fight that needs to go before us, and we need a breakthrough in every area. We can't look back. You'll turn into salt. <laughs> And it's not good salt. It's dirty. <laughs> Would you grab your swords and go to John 12? The Gospel of John. In verse 20. Let's begin together. Now, there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was the city of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. He who hates his life in this world will will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will what? Will honor. Wow. Will honor. Again, Jesus speaks of his death, the end of things to come. It's called the crash. Everyone say the crash. We are in the crash, you're going to see about a lot, a lot of things begin to crash, including the stock market. All kinds of things are going to begin to crash, and there'll be a ripple effect of this crash. Is everybody with me? In other words, things must, Jesus was explaining, things must come to an end so it could be new. The world will never be the same. It's coming to an end. The world is not ending, but its system is ending. And then it will become new. And it will be controlled by Jesus. It will be controlled by the body of Christ for a short period of time. And then it will be released into the hand of the enemy. And then we'll let the enemy continue to play his games. And then we'll come back and kick butt. But right now, there'll be a time of blessing and prosperity. But things are coming to an end. We still have to go that transition we call the crash. It's the what? The crash. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 35. Let's speak it, but someone will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one. 
What you sow is not made alive unless it what? It's not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow the body that it shall be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases to each seed its own body. So again, <laughs> it doesn't become alive until it what? Dies. <laughs> the crash. In other words, it means something's coming to the end. When thing crashes. When somebody crashes into a building, it comes to an end. When you crash your car, it comes to an end. Amen. Things are coming to an end so that new things can be released. So don't go out and crash your car so you can get a new one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Revelation chapter 1 verse 4. John to the... Uh, Seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he's coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the what? Omega. The beginning and the, and the end. The Lord, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. In other words, he's the Alpha. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and Omega. So he's the one that starts things and ends things. Everything is according to his time and purpose, his plan. Not our plan. That's called grace. And his plan is being released. Again, beginning and end of all things at cycled times of events, slowly dismantling worldly distractions of control. Until the crash, then the new. It's been a process. It's been a process for years. Man has tried to increase it, make it move faster, faster, and they did, and they did not succeed. But now it's happening. God has put a servant called Trump, representing the last trumpet. He's put a servant where the world is looking at him, all the world. Those who hate him don't even know why they hate him. They ask somebody, why do you hate Trump? Well, that's not this. Nature. Morons. Deceived. They don't know the truth. You're not looking at a man. You're looking at a person. Where the, you're looking at the spirit of God using an individual. Nobody can sustain what that man's gone through without God's presence. It's impossible. That's why they hate me more. But God's using that man to expose the wickedness. That's what it's about. Not because he's great. Not because he's holy. Or anything. It's nothing. God has just chosen that man. And it was prophesied that as soon as he stepped into the White House, the Spirit of God would come upon him and become a new man. He loves his country, and he loves the Lord. <laughs> he's not afraid to say it. And men are being drawn, not to him, but to God's presence he carries. Because there's something about this man. Come on, sitting in that courtroom for all these days, being persecuted, lied about, knowing that you're, you're innocent, being convicted of, uh, uh, of all of these false crimes, and knowing that you're going to go to jail. He'll be sentenced, I believe, next month. And he will go to jail. But he won't stay there. The purpose is that's the final thing. The crash. Which is going to create a ripple effect to all humanity. And I truly believe this is where the military will step in. And this is where things begin to take 
a change. Remember, there's over 400,000 sealed indictments to pick up people and remove them from their positions. <laughs> Again, things are about to happen. You know, just because we don't see it all, it's happening. And we are in coming more and more to the crash. Let me explain to you another crash. Today, 50 years ago, 1974, Nixon dismantled our currency to be backed by gold and silver. He made a deal with Saudi Arabia to protect them as long as they used U.S. money called uh, petrodollar. 50 years ago, you know, 50 is associated with Jubilee, isn't it? In 1974, today is 6 9 24. That means that the contract that they signed 50 years ago is up today. Think about it. And you know what? Saudi Arabia ain't renewing it. The petrol dollar is going to be dismantled. This ripple effect of a petrol dollar being lost means the dismantlement of this currency in this country. All other countries are trying to sell as much American money as they can because they know it's going to be worth nothing. Saudi Arabia will no longer sign that agreement. The petrol dollar will be dis destroyed. <laughs> Somebody get it? And... Saudi Arabia signed a 50-year agreement with China to sell their oil to them, not using U.S. currency, using any other currency that's backed by gold and silver. That's where we have the BRICS nations, because they're all backed by gold and silver. Now, all, their, all other countries that have stored gold in this country want their gold back. And the United States told them that it would take seven years to send their gold back. What the problem? What's the problem? Because they don't have it. So now they're trying to collect as much gold as they can from other places. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Remember, oil ran the world for years. Oil currency, petrol currency ran the world for years. It's now coming to an end. Everything's going to be restored back to what God has placed in order. Silver and gold is his. That's currency. Amen? So don't be deceived with U.S. bonds. Don't buy anything. U.S. It's going to be, it's, right now it's only a currency right now in the United States, it's worth 70 to 80 percent of what it was. It, you're going to find the ripple effect where it will actually be worth zip. That's why they're trying to promote digital currency now. All banks are trying to bite up gold and silver. Actually, Russia and China have the most gold in the world. Putin is even trying to bring what we call Guantanamo Bay cases. You know, in the courts, he's trying to bring that to Ukraine to expose all their wickedness. That's why the United States, well, this uh, demonic uh, presidency is trying to fund as much money as they can to them. But they're nobody, the news doesn't tell anybody of this. But Putin is saying, I'm going to bring charges against all of you. And you will come before our courts and be charged for your guilty crimes of inhumane acts. He's already removed all U.S. stuff out of Russia. He's commanding all their banks and all their, all their stuff, anything with the United States, to leave Russia. Because he knows how corrupt it's associated with the Babylonian system, the Antichrist system. You know, for years, thinking about this, our country has been indoctrinating our kids in school with perversion. 
cross-dressing, approval of homosexual, lesbian, teachers, women teachers dressing up as men, men teachers dressing up as women. All of these things, they're promoting perversion. They're calling it freedom. But it isn't freedom, it's bondage. It's a lie. It's the Antichrist. Infiltration and bringing perversion. It's just like being, a, 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 you know, in some of these Islamic states where these children are brought up to hate, <clears throat> hate Israel. They live on hatred. That's no different here. They're, li they're brought them up to live on lust. Love of money, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. Arrogance and pride. Russia has changed that. They've changed their generation years ago. They, that's why they removed all of that. They began to raise <clears throat> up their children in the schools about God, the fear of God, what's right, what's wrong. They are now the generation that is the righteous generation, believe it or not. The United States is the corrupt generation. That's why we have such a battle here. Heck, you go, and, uh, you go out and protest in Russia that you're a homosexual lesbian, you're prisoned. It's illegal. They will not accept any of that perversion. They arrest you, put you in prison, or export you. Here they promote you. They put you in the White House. They give you an office as a governor or mayors and judges. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's happening. We're in it. But you know what? Everything's about to crash. Praise God. Philippians 3 and verse 7, please. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ Jesus, the righteousness which is from God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind or thought pattern. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, the, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. Forgetting those things that are behind. See, pride, can't let, pride cannot let go of yesterday. It always wants to bring it in front to do something with it. Pride can't let go. Always avoiding the crash. <laughs> the end of something. Waiting for the new. You know, Jesus even said, that, talked about, he sent Jeremiah down to the potter's house. He said, look it, I've got some vessels that need to be redone. Let's put them on the wheel. That's, in fact, when they go on the wheel, what happens? Crash. To get what? Redone. You know, many of us are in, often on that wheel. And that's just how it is. We're often on that wheel. We're often on that wheel. Why? Because he's molding us. He's molding us. Remember we talked about he's, he's leading us into and preparing us for immortality. And what does revelation bring? Revolution. We're not only in a revolution, but we're in a time of crash. Oh, yeah. I love that the Lord keeps us updated. 
You know? It's amazing to me. He keeps us updated in things and shows, you know, so that we're alert. We're, we're on the edge all the time, waiting for something to happen. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Do what? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And all of your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. <laughs> See, there's too much leaning on self-reliance of understanding, not realizing <laughs> they're wise in their own eyes. That's called pride. Verse 7, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, don't despise the chasing in the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Wow. Again, there's too much leaning on self-reliance of understanding and not realizing that they are wise in their own eyes, <laughs> not from Christ. Living a life of avoiding their end or the things that they hold on to until the crash. Then great disappointment and then blame. Many times people are, when they get into a place of disappointment, then they blame everybody else not willing to take responsibility. Amen? Welcome to the crash. I think I called my wife crash for a few days one time. <laughs> or was it longer? <laughs> Poor girl has to live with me. <laughs> it's been ordained, though. <laughs> Predestined. And we love each other. We won't harass each other, too. Hallelujah. Hebrews 3 and verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they will always go astray in their heart. How many of you know False emotions can cause your heart to go astray. Anxiousness can cause your heart to go astray. Fear can cause your heart to go astray. Anger. All of these. All these emotional effects. The only thing that doesn't cause your heart to go astray is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. And they know and they have not known my ways, he said. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin or influence of evil. For we have become partakers of Christ if, everyone say if, we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Obedience brings peace and rest. Obedience brings peace. If you're anxious and you can't, whatever, and you drift, it's because you're not walking in obedience. You know, the, we live from the future, but it doesn't mean you know the future. Does that, does that mean you understand that? That doesn't mean God's revealed everything to you about the future. We live from the future of the spiritual arena. As seated in heavenly places, blessed. But we, we don't know all of our future. Our future has been written for us, but everyone has a function to play. We live from the future because of who we are in Christ. But we don't plan the future because he plans it. Somebody get it. I can't plan the future. I can only put what, uh, what he puts in my heart. And then I watch things unfold. Then I step in it. 
I step in the unfolding and don't stop on the folded, then it never unfolds. Amen? Is everybody with me on this? So we watch. Man, I'm telling you, we've been watching so many things happen. It's unfolding. It's incredible. So one of our vans um, got dismantled. <laughs> Crush. <laughs> Might be crushed now. I don't know. And so we were waiting. It's like, man, you know what? So, and Kate and I went somewhere, and we, and we're on our way back, I, I, there was this uh, uh, car lot, and they, ha they, have, they sell nothing but vans. And, man, I've seen that already. And I've drove, I'm, I didn't know where it was. And I said, awesome, let's pull in. And we pulled in there, and we talked to a guy, this, that, whatever, yes. But, you know, it, it wasn't a bad deal. It was a good deal. It was a nice van and whatever. Was, but I just didn't have the witness that we were supposed to purchase anything. We were supposed to wait. And then there was another one I looked at, and I was like, you know what? Okay. So we were uh, doing some work at a location, and uh, they had a van sitting there. And um, I couldn't go to there to work because I shared with them about what happened to our van, and I couldn't make it that day. So when I went in, and she goes, you know, there, this, there's a van here. It's my dad's. I said, well, we're, we're looking for a van. She said, let me call him. It's a 1998. He bought it in 1999. It's a 2500 Dodge van, extended, air conditioning. Thing runs beautiful. She said, take it for rides. Right. So if you want, you can have it for 400 bucks. I said, snap. So Dave and I took it for a ride. We got lost. And we, had to, we, <laughs> we had to Google our way back to the place. <laughs> And then we were checking the AC, the first, the, the vents are not working in the front so well. And then we checked the rear vents and things. And I kept hearing the compressor come on. He, they kept saying that it doesn't work, and it works. So we'll be bringing that home Monday. Again, it's just the unfolding. You know what I'm saying? Don't step on, don't step in the future. If you're stepping in things that's not God's time, you're stepping on the folded plan of God, and it can't unfold. If you allow God to unfold, then you step in it. And you just keep stepping in the unfolding. And things begin to happen. Listen, he doesn't send you without provision. He always provides. If he's called you to do something, he'll provide for it. Always. He doesn't send you out there to beg. I see these people begging on the corner. I always ask them, you a believer? Yeah. Then what are you doing out here? Why are you out here? Why aren't you trusting God? Here's a booklet. Go pray your way out. Again, believers should not be out there begging. We're not, we're not beggars. Our God owns it all. Yes, we put requests before him. We put things before him. Yeah. But we got a warfare. Nothing comes without a fight. Everything comes. You got a warfare. The Bible says take it by force. Don't be a weenie. And I, what are they called? What are those hot dogs? Oscar Myers. Don't be an Oscar Meyer. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Let's go a little bit further. Obedience brings what? Peace and rest. Leviticus 25, verse 11. That 50th year shall be a what? A jubilee to you and me. In it you shall neither sow nor reap what grows or its own accord, of its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine. For it is the jubilee that shall be holy to you. You shall eat its produce from the field. In this year of jubilee, each one shall return to his possessions. Come on, think about this. And if you sell anything to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor's hands, you shall not oppress one another. Again, 50 years ago, what happened? There was a contract between the United States and Saudi Arabia, petrodollar. It's, everything's now being returned. See, things got to be returned to the people. This is what, it's this God's people. It's his creation. He's returning things back to the original state which he wanted it to. 
See, he's, the body of Christ is supposed to be raising up and running everything. He dismantled the head of the serpent. He cut it off. The only ones that serve the cut off head are those who are not in Christ. Or they're in uh, a walking unrighteously. The crash of 50 to renew the new. There's those cycles. You'll see 50 and many things that are, remember the abortion 50 years ago that's been crashed. Bam, no more abortion. No more approval. All kinds of things. 50, 50, 50, 50. What was it? 50 was Pentecost. New life. Fire of God. Fire of God is the power of God. Remember, the currency of heaven is faith. Without faith, you can't, you can't buy nothing. It takes faith to fight. It takes faith to pray. It takes faith to worship. Amen? It takes faith to be obedient. Matthew 7, 24, please. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock, the anointing. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock, the anointing. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the what? Sand, sinking sand. That means what's going to happen? Crash. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had an authority and not as a scribe. Because <laughs> they'd been taught by scribes for so long. Sinking sand, so much building on false rea realities until it crashes. See, false realities can't la uh, last. Welcome to the crash. We're going to rejoice in the crash because it ain't going to touch us. We're crashless. Hallelujah. I don't even know if that's a word, but praise God. It's in my vocabulary. <laughs> I have my own. <laughs> First Peter chapter 4, verse 7. Let's speak it. But the end of all things is at hand. In other words, the crash of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another. Without what? Grumbling. As each one has a, received a gift, minister to one another as a good steward to the manifold grace of God. And if anyone speaks, let them speak in the, as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let them minister it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. The crash. Remember, things got to crash to what? Restart. Amen? Things got to come to an end before it becomes new. First John chapter 2. Verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of self or life is not of the Father, but is of the what? World. And the world is what? It's passing. It's, it's the process of the crash. The crashing of the system. The world system. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. In other words, it's influence. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, as the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even so now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not among us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. See, if there's any kind of blockage, 
even though you're carrying all, you knowing all things, it's not being interpreted. Is everybody with me on that? If there's blockages in you, desires that's overtaking certain things, things of your past, things, whatever, that's interfering, those emotional things, that's interfering, know these things and interpret these things and removing all walls that are blocking it. Desires, and so you got to be careful. The Bible should have, it talks about the desire of the Lord, not the desire of your flesh, not the desire of your heart, the desire of your mind, the desire of the Lord. That's why we exchange our hearts every day. Amen. So in this, the world is crashing. The process of the world system is crashing right now. It's going to come to an end so a new one can come. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. We've heard this many times. For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, and unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, traitors. Wow. Those are people of treason also. Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny his power. And from such people do what? Turn away. For this sort of those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men, women, and children and load them down with sins and various lusts. They're always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth where they can be free. Well, they got knowledge, but they ain't got power. Now, as Janus and Jabris resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. Wow. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in Antioch and Icam and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them... All the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in the righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Last days, crushing times. Crushing times. Last. When it says last, it means crushing times. A process of crushing something to what? Become new. Everything must what? Crash. Everything must crash. And I'm going to close in Revelation 18, verse 1. Revelation brings what? Revolution. Yes. Let's speak it. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. He cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great has what? Fallen. It's crashed. It has fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons. It sounds like the White House. A prison of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean, hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have committed rich, have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to your, her works. In the cup which 
she has mixed, mixed double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow, and I will not see sorrow. Therefore her plagues will come in one day. I would say that's called a suddenly. Death and mourning and famine. She will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise any more. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory and every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze and iron and marble and cinnamon and incense, frankens, frank, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots and, and bodies and souls of men. The fruit that her, your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple, scarlet, adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every ship, all who travel by ship, sailors and many as trade as on the sea stood in the distance and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, the great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich for their, by her wealth, in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, O heaven, you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Now, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? Again, it's the end of the world system. It's called the crash. We're in it. We're watching it. This currency will begin to ripple effect. It'll take a little bit of time, but it won't take long. It won't take long at all. Currents, the, uh, the petrodollar will diminish, completely be destroyed globally. This is not just here. It's globally. This is the purpose of dismantling Babylon. Remember, the United States is a Babylonian state, a country, among, amongst all their alliances that are Babylonian. But people are breaking away from the Babylonian system because they know it's corrupt. They know what's been going on. And people are beginning to rise up and wake up because they see it. Look, it's chaos. Remember, chaos is an area where it awakens people. When they go and they can't get their money, come on, you've heard of people can't get money out of banks. Banks closing, and they're not refunding them. That insurance ain't going to mean nothing to them. There's over 600-something banks that are closing already because they do not have the gold and silver to back their currency or their loans. And people can't even pay for their loans because they don't have one. That bank closes, you don't have a debt to pay. Now think about that. That will be another ripple effect that will begin to awaken people. But God's placing his body in strategic positions to heal the land and to establish that Joseph ministry to help feed and clothe and shelter and to declare to build platforms to rescue souls. We're a part of it. We're alive right now to be a part of it. Don't get distracted. Amen. Don't get distracted. And don't stray from what God has called you to be and to do. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let it be protected by your seeds. All the seeds be protected by your blood. And let the anointing seal them. 
and activate them so that we can constantly be reminded every day of where we are in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.